When it comes to preventing integer overflows, I want to first talk about the very common anti-patterns. So for instance, the intuition would suggest that the first thing you should do is just do something like if a plus b is greater than c, then you know we know that this thing is going to be incorrect. But if a or b are attacker controlled data, then unfortunately when you do the a plus b, you could have already overflowed before this sanity check occurs and consequently this will be a low number instead of the number that's greater than C as you were expecting. Also, it can introduce issues with signedness uh, that we'll talk about in the other integer issues section in the future. Of course, if either of these are signed, then you might you know, wrap around from being a big number to a small number. And again, that small number is not going to be greater than this big number as you were expecting. Now, sometimes it's recommended to basically do the mathematically equivalent thing and subtract b from both sides. And so if you have this big number minus b, and you know the presumption is that b is going to be less than c, and so consequently, you know, that can underflow. And then, you know, you will find mathematically equivalently whether or not a plus b would have overflowed uh, and caused, you know, an incorrect sanity check. Now, the problem, of course, with this is that this in and of itself is insufficient because uh, if B is attacker controlled, then they could just set it to a big number, which consequently will lead to a small minus big integer underflow, and the sanity check will be bypassed there as well. So something like this only works if you're adding in a whole bunch of extra sanity checks of, you know, is A less than C and B less than C. And then also sometimes people do a, is A plus B greater than, or sorry, less than A, and the idea is that if this integer overflows and wraps around, then all of a sudden these values will become less than, you know, this initial value. And, you know, that gets closer to being something that might be okay, uh, but then you have to start worrying about whether or not you're accounting for signedness correctly, right? So A plus B less than A might be what you expect when you're dealing with unsigned numbers, but, you know, do you want to allow something like A in the minus one and B minus two? Because A plus B is, you know, legitimately less than A when those are assigned to numbers, and that's not the sort of integer overflow that you were looking for. So, you know, it's actually extremely difficult to do these sanity checks right and to detect integer overflows for all of these signed and unsigned cases. So let me just instead introduce you to safe math. Safe math is a pleasant bath. So how does one do safe math? Well, the answer is built-in compiler intrinsics, mostly. And this might be the coolest thing you've never heard of, and I assume you've never heard of it because I see it so infrequently. So Clang has these mechanisms, these built-in compiler intrinsics called built-in add overflow, sub overflow, and multiply overflow. And there are versions that just, you know, uh, don't care about the type and you just use that, or there's versions where if you want to explicitly specify the type, you can do that as well. Clang has that, and GCC has the exact same things using the exact same semantics. So that's good. That allows for com uh, compiler compatibility. And then Windows has something similar in kernel space. It has nt int safe, which adds a bunch of things like RTL long add. So in compiler, uh, sorry, in kernel space, you can avoid things like integer overflows on your add operations, etc. So let's talk about how you use safe math. We are going from an acid bath to a pleasant bath. All right, so here was, you know, here is a very trivial uh, integer overflow. So we've got unsigned int a, we're using a to i to bring in attack controlled value, unsigned int b, unsigned int c. So a plus b equals c, and we would expect this to wrap around if an attacker provides argv values that are close to the maximum values. So to do this with safe math instead, we can have this explicit version, which uses a, and I say explicit here because I'll show you a terser version later, uses an explicit variable, bool overflowed, and you set it to false to start with. Then you use the built-in add overflow. And what does this do? It does a plus b, and it stores the result into c. Then it returns from this intrinsic whether or not the result of A and B overflowed. So it's still going to put the result in C whether or not it overflowed, and then it's up to you to decide whether you care that it overflowed or not, which for purposes of this class, you almost always care. It has to be a sort of very rare day where you're intentionally overflowing, right? So basically, if that overflowed, then you print out something saying, you know, it overflowed and you error out. 
So if we go ahead and run that, we can see that one plus two is three, and that works fine. But one plus four billion something, which corresponds to all Fs, would lead to an integer overflow, which is correctly caught and then alerted and exited in this code. So like I said, you can do it explicitly with a overflow variable to tell you and allow you to check explicitly that there's an overflow, or you can just you know, put this into you know, a conditional statement because again, it's returning a Boolean where it's true if an overflow occurred as a result of adding these two values together. The thing that you need to not do is add in this built-in add overflow and magically assume that it's going to error out and return for you. I've seen this in code. Basically, you still have to check whether or not an overflow occurred. You can't just throw it in and expect it to magically fix your acid bath. And additionally, if we were to consider the case of signed integers instead of unsigned, well, the good news is you can use exactly the same safe math for a safe and pleasant bath in order to do the overflow check and then error out if appropriate. Again, same thing. We've got one and negative one, that's zero. That shouldn't be an error. One and the extremely large value, which interpreted as a signed value is a negative one, and that's not an error. One and two is not an error, but one and two billion, which corresponds to the largest possible positive value for a signed 32-bit integer, that will overflow. That will wrap around from two billion to all of a sudden being you know, negative two billion. So that's not good, and this is successfully detected by the compiler intrinsic.